ye, hear ye, all hail the mighty Alpha Omega Sin, Rob Van Dam style. Welcome to an updated collection video, because I haven't done one in quite some time. And I did a Sega Saturn collection video quite a while back, and I decided why not do one about my import Sega Saturn collection, which I've been devoting a little more time to over the past, like, year or two, some shit like that. And... Ever since I got a Game Shark, which also allows you to do the region bypass and it acts as a memory card, so that's why I picked up because it was $10 brand new. I'm like, dude, that's fucking rad! So I could play all the import Sega Saturn games because over in Japan, they had tons upon tons of really kick ass games over there and any PAL region games I, want, I may want to get. But uh, yeah, I thought that I, I know it's not a gigantic collection compared to many people out there, but it's it's pretty modest and it makes me happy. So I'm gonna go through some of these right now. Let's see. Firstly, one of the top ones that I wanted for the longest time and was one of the first ones that I ever picked up, and that is Elevator Action Returns. Elevator Action is an arcade series. I played it a lot when it was on the regular ass Nintendo. And it, a very simple uh, concept. You're just going in and out of doors and going up and down elevators shooting random bad guys and that that's pretty much it it's uh nothing to that and for some reason i took a large liking to it, it you know it granted uh the difficulty would increase as you've been through it but this one they retained the 2d style but it was much 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 more detailed and instead of just you know uh, going up and down random um uh, buildings You'll go throughout vast stages, you'll go inside of helicarriers, you'll go inside of airplanes, you'll go inside of really big ass buildings, you'll fight against a lot more than just people, and I like that a whole lot. Um, this game, I, I kept on seeing tons of footage of it, and I know that there is a collection, I think it's the Taito collection, I can't remember off the top of my head, but it included it, but I wanted this one a whole lot more, because I mean, this was the real deal to me. So I eventually got my hands on it, if you want to see what the back of it looks like, but there's a little sticker covering up that part right there, and you can open up so you can see the disc, which will show some of the screenshots and stuff like that. But uh, this game, yeah, I think I usually get to about stage four or five and I always keep on dying because the game, it does, it gets extremely fucking difficult, but you just run, duck, jump, get out of the way of everything, you know, there's barrels, knock them over and start shooting them and try to blow shit up and stuff, and there's multiple paths that you can go and take throughout some of the stages, and it's, it is, it's, it's really cool, I, I'm a big fan of sprite work in general, especially when it's really detailed in something like this. So, if you get the chance, you ought to check this out, and I like the cover because it kind of reminds me of the cover to Snatcher in a lot of ways. And that dude's mullet is fucking amazing, do you see that shit? He's like, I'm not fucking around. So, yeah, all that mullet power. Now, speaking of games that made me want to import for the Sega Saturn, Castlevania Symphony of Night for Sega Saturn was a must-own for years. Uh, Castlevania Symphony of Night is actually in my top list of games of all time. I've played through the PlayStation 1 version of it, I can't even tell you how many times. Like, I know it's over 10 times. And I'm talking, like, the uh, original castle and the inverted castle. So, I always wanted this one because, uh, while reading about it whenever I was younger, I heard, oh man, this has extra stuff in it. You know, it's got extra familiars, extra weapons, extra sections and bosses and stuff. Maria's playable and all this. I'm like... Why didn't we get any of that stuff? Why couldn't they have brought this to the States? And they never did, which is really unfortunate. So when you're playing through this, you know, all the stuff that's in your inventory, it's all going to be in Japanese. So you're you're kind of going to have to deal, uh, more or less. <sighs> Sorry, uh, I'm getting congested. But anyway, this, uh, I know one of the big sections in it that a lot of people made a big deal about was the Underground Garden. And I always thought that was really cool. And again, Maria being playable in it. And I think on the... Uh, was it is it on the xbox 360 version or on castlevania dracula x chronicles that she's playable as well i can't remember off the top of my head but this version has a ton of extra stuff the only downside to it is that there is some noticeable slowdown here and there throughout playing the game but it's still cool that you get to see all those extra familiars and all the stuff that's on the sega saturn version doesn't show up in any other version anywhere really except for maria being playable so if you are a diehard fan of this, it's pretty much a must have for any Castlevania fan, any Sega Saturn fan, any import junkie, this game right here. Um, it won't be super cheap, but still it's, uh, it's gonna be something that you'll wanna get. 
in general, and that's what the inside looks like. And I've used that as background art so many fucking times, I, I can't even tell you. Let's see, what does it look like under the desk? We have Dracula's castle, his digs, so yeah. Absolutely love this to death, and very happy that I finally have it. And can never, um, I can never pronounce the back of this. Aku Majo Dracula X Gekka no Yasu. I cannot fucking do it for the life of me, but at least I tried. So we got that. Now this I, I can attribute uh, to the folks over at GameSack because I've watched a lot of their videos and they were talking about OutRun. Dun, 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 part of the Sega Ages collection. And OutRun is a really big series for any Sega diehard fan. If you grew up with Sega, chances are you saw this on a Genesis, on Saturn, in the arcade, something like that. And OutRun, I never actually got to play the Saturn version of it and they made it look absolutely phenomenal. So I'm like, huh, I like the idea a whole bunch. On the back you can see the different controllers that are compatible with it. But, you know, whenever you start up, you get to pick your music and stuff, and you just go barreling down track, avoid uh, hitting into cars and hitting into the sides of the walls and stuff. Or else your car will go flipping, going all over the fucking place. Both people inside just go flying out of it, and you gotta run back to your car and get inside of it, a la Road Rash and stuff like that. Then, magically, you appear in the middle of the road and you keep going. But uh, it, it's all about just trying to get to the checkpoint within time so that you can keep going. There's like lots of bra branching paths and stuff whenever you're driving. So it's not always the same way. So you'll see a fork in a road and depending on what path you take depends on what you're going to see and stuff. But for racing junkies, this is just a lot of fun. It admittedly is a pretty tough game. I, I won't lie. This isn't something that I picked up and just destroyed, um, you know, on my first or second try. So, and, and it's been years since I had played Outrun because I don't have it for anything else but Saturn. I shit you not. So, it's one of those things, yeah, want to go and have this. So, yeah, now I do. Yay! Oh, and I thought it was kind of interesting that the uh, sides of it, it's red. I'm assuming that's because it's part of Sega Ages, maybe? I'm not sure, I don't have any of the other Sega Ages games. So I'm just kind of throwing a guess out there. But there goes some of the official art. So, oh wait, you know what? No, actually I do have another version of that. Technically, uh, the, was it the Sega Classics Collection, I think it is, on PlayStation 2, where they do the 3D versions of a bunch of their classic games. So yeah, I do technically have another version of OutRun. All right, so this one right here, uh, Kaite, I don't know, it's it's In The Hunt, put it that way. So I have no clue how the fuck you pronounce this, but this is In The Hunt, and In The Hunt uh, does have a domestic release. As a matter of fact, it was also released on PlayStation 1. But every time that I found the game, it was always a lot more expensive than what I want to pay for. So I found the Japanese version for like 10 bucks. And I'm like, dude, I'll fucking pay that. That's way cheaper, especially for like the same exact thing. And it's not like there's Japanese words all over the place and you won't know what the fuck you're doing. But it's a shoot 'em up. So, you know, ver little um, uh, side scrolling shoot 'em up. And the main thing that attracted me to the game was that the people that did Metal Slug were invested in this. That automatically grabs my attention because I love the Metal Slug games, I love shoot 'em ups so I'm like, dude, that sounds extremely killer. So I had to go and grab this. Apparently the PlayStation 1 version is a little bit better because there's some slowdown on this. I don't think it's all that big of a deal, but you know, what the fuck ever. But yeah, you got yourself a little ship that you fly around in and just shoot the living crap out of everything. Ar artistically, the game is beautiful. That's one of the main things. Like, I, I love their art style and the work that they put into it. Like, I'm talking like every Metal Slug game. This, and I know that there's another game that they had done stuff on prior to Metal Slug coming out. And the name's escaping me at the moment. But yeah, I haven't played this one a whole ton. But the few times I have gone to play it, whenever I was like on a random kick of playing Saturn, I've enjoyed the shit out of it. And if you would like to see the inside of it, then there you go. I do like the cover to this a lot more than uh, the US release of it because it's just like a ship blowing up stuff or what the fuck ever. And this one has a really badass looking dragon thing on it and I thought that looked super neat with a little submarine flying right by it. So that's cool. I like it. I like it a lot. Now, Cotton 2. I do not really have any of the Cotton games whatsoever. This, as a matter of fact, is my very first foray into the Cotton series. I've heard people talk about it and talk about it in a very upbeat manner. Now, this one I thought was kind of interesting because the case on this is a little bit thicker than uh, traditional cases. I can show you uh, right there. 
it's kind of hard to tell, but this one is a little bit bigger and I had wondered why, but inside it comes with some extras and I thought this was interesting. Uh, I do have uh, this buying card that comes with it too. I really wish that we would have had these uh, over here in the US. Let's see, so Magical Night Dreams, Cotton 2, so we got that. And it's actually a calendar, though I'm not sure how the calendar is supposed to go together, but on each side you have uh, different months, so 1998, a good year for games by the way. But uh, I thought it was really cool that they included something like this. Most of the time it's, you know, random limited editions that include stuff like this, but this one had it. Now, since I just got done talking about shoot 'em ups, this one also is a shoot 'em up. Oh, it should also show the disc too, so you can check that out. It's a little, little red disc. But um, when I had originally seen the game, I thought it looked really cool because, again, graphically, this looks amazing if you want to see the back here. So you're just like a, a little cutesy uh, anime witch who is using random spells and you're collecting all these crystals and stuff like that. And I thought it looked really cool, but I, I can admit this game kicked the living shit out of me every time that I played it. I was just like, holy fuck, man. And there was cutscenes and stuff like that, but it's all in Japanese, no subtitles or anything like that, because this is a Japanese only game. But um, yeah, I know that the cotton games, let's see, there's one on Dreamcast. I, uh, let's see, there's one on Game Boy Advance, try, or is it Game Boy Cal? I cannot remember off the top of my head, so I do apologize. Uh, I'm going through a lot of games, so it, it's just like, oh my god, information overflow! But it was one of those games I had seen, and every time I had seen footage of it, I'm like, that looks really cool. Well, I'm not the best person in the entire world at uh, vertical shooters, or top-down shooters, or horizontal shooters, or shoot 'em ups in general. I still enjoy the living fuck out of them, and this was one of the ones that I had heard tons of great things about. And because it was so different, you know, you're not a spaceship going through space and stuff like that. So I, I, I like that idea a whole bunch, and that's why I want to go and pick it up. And it definitely is good. So. This right here, again, was uh, one of the earliest uh, import games I had ever gotten, which you got to see just faintly whenever I compared the case. But this is Biohazard, which is technically uh, Resident Evil 1 for Sega Saturn. Now, while back there, I do actually have Resident Evil, which is sitting right there beside Sephiroth. I don't know if anybody can see it, but it is there. Um, Biohazard, the Japanese version of this, is a really big deal to me because it has the completely uncut intro to it, and I like that a whole hell of a lot. Um, it, you know, I like it because it always pissed me off back in the day when they made the Resident Evil Director's Cut because it's not a director's cut because it's not fully uncut. And that pissed me off to no end because I remember reading about it. I went out and I got the game as soon as possible, and sure enough, it was all still taken out, and it, apparently it was a last minute change. I'm like, what a fucking ripoff. Okay, you have different camera angles and shit like that, but I'm like, you know, you're a bunch of fucking chodes, man. But this one uh, is some noticeable differences. There's an extra enemy that's inside of this one. Um, I cannot remember the name of it, but it looks a lot like a hunter and an insect put together. So put it that way, it only shows up like twice in the game. And if you're playing through on Chris's game, you actually, the first time that you encounter Tyrant, you actually fight a secondary Tyrant that comes out in a tube on the opposite side of the laboratory. And I thought that was pretty fucking crazy. I'm like, dude, that's awesome. So, yeah, it, it's absolutely great. Oh, and there's uh, the battle mode, too. I don't know why I forgot about that. So the battle mode is very similar to like what you've seen in uh, Resident Evil 3 and stuff like that, where you're just trying to get from point A to point B and stuff, and that's really about it. But yeah, I like this a whole lot. If you were going to import for the Saturn, I'll say definitely pick this up, it's great. Again, you don't need to know any Japanese to be able to play through this because all the dialogue is spoken in English. That's how they originally recorded it. Uh, but when you get like the text files and stuff, you won't know what the fuck it's saying, so you need to know a little bit of Resident Evil to get through it. So yeah, let's see, what's next? Oh, um, whenever I went to the Too Many Games convention, um, I, I was all excited, and I ended up getting this game just handed to me. And it's based off of Gundam SD, I'm pretty sure. I don't really know because I haven't looked into it a whole lot. I'm not actually a big fan of Gundam SD. Let's see, so, uh, Super Robot Wars F Final? Ah, but I don't know a whole hell of a lot about it. Like, I, My experience with a lot of Gundam games is relatively small. So to speak, because uh, while I had a lot of friends that watched the Gundam Wing series, I liked Endless Waltz, and that was kind of it. And I liked some of the figures and stuff, like uh, Waltall, I, I like that, and uh, Epion. 
I, I like those ones the most. They were just really fucking awesome, especially Epion. I actually had the figure, and I was going to put together a kit, but I'm far too fucking lazy. But anyway, I do not know shit about this game, I'll be honest. I still have not gotten a chance to play it, but on the back there... And the reason why I haven't gotten to play it is because I saw that there's lots of... It's, it's text-heavy. So I tend to avoid games that are text-heavy because when it's Japanese, it kind of defeats the purpose of the game because you won't know what the fuck they're saying. So yeah, if for anybody out there that's into Gundam games, maybe you can say something about it. I have absolutely no clue, but yeah. So I have uh, Super Robot Wars F Final. All right, uh, this right here, Willy Wombat. Willy Wombat was one of those games I had looked at and being a platforming fan, I'm like, how did this not come out outside of Japan. It just, it kind of blew my mind. I, I'd seen it, it's like a little isometric uh, camera view and it was platforming about all over the place. And I, it just genuinely, again, was just surprised. This had never come out. I did not know next to Jack shit about it. And the game was seven bucks. I'm like, okay, whatever. Sure, that sounds cool with me. If you want to see the inside, uh, actually it kind of looks like a comic book cover right there, which is just a black and white version of the regular cover. And I don't want the manual falling out. Get the fuck back in there. But, uh, oh, and it looks like you can actually send away and get stuff from Hudson Soft there. I see a Bomberman clock, Bomberman stickers, a random hat, and some other shit. I have no clue. Oh, Hudson, I really miss you. But anyway, platforming fans, take note. Hey, granted, there, there are little dialogue scenes that are going to be in Japanese, so if you don't give a fuck about the story, then you'll be A-OK, -okay and you can still traverse around and figure out your way about the game. But it was something I wanted to go and check out, and the cover of it, I, seriously, when I first saw it, it made me think of Darkwing Duck, so I was like, fuck it, why not? I'll go and get something like that. Now, these I'm gonna put all together, because this is Capcom Generations 2, 3, and 4. Now, each one, I got those like in one big set, so if you want to see them all side by side by side, there you go. So, two, three, and four, and there is uh, some other ones out there. And I mainly want to get them for this one right here. This was the top one on my list, and this one was the second top one on my list. And this one, it was in there, so I was like, fuck it, I don't really care. Got them for an insanely good price, so I didn't mind. If you want to see what the inside of one of these looks like, uh, you know, I'll set these down to make it a little bit easier. And there. Okay, so this is Capcom Generations 2, and this right here is like Ghosts and Goblins and Ghouls and Ghosts and stuff like that. So the inside of it, right there, you got Arthur, pretty much uh, absolutely sprinting like a bad motherfucker that he is. But inside they also included this right here which shows uh, Capcom Generations. I guess it's like an entire set that you can get. It has a little holder for them, but it shows all five games right there. Uh, the Spine Card Forge, and I have no fucking clue what this is. So <laughs> there's that, but I, I thought it was kind of nice that those were included. I wish I would have known about the little holder, so maybe I can find that down the road or something. But this right here, uh, being a, I grew up with Ghouls and Ghosts and Ghosts and Goblins. Uh, Ghouls and Ghosts on Sega Genesis, thanks to my brother. That was one of the games that he got with the Sega Genesis. So when I first got to play it, that was one of the games I liked. And, you know, liking spooky things and horror games and shit like that, it was something that I've always loved a whole bunch. The games are hard as fuck, though. I'm talking, like, throw the controller in a complete fit of fucking rage difficult. At least to me. I know that there's going to be some people out there like, I didn't have a problem, but I still get my ass kicked by the games. That, that's really the truth. It, but, um... I still love them to death, regardless of that. So, if you are a fan of the series, this is like absolutely perfect conversions of them on here. I have no qualms with this. This is absolutely amazing and worth having, and then some. Let's see. Now, Capcom Generations 3, I didn't know a whole bunch. I actually have it pulled up here. So, because the game's on the back, it's in Japanese, and I don't know a whole lot about them. But we have Volgus, Sansan, Pirate Ship, uh, Higamaru trying so hard to fucking say these correct and x x's x x's yeah well, what the fuck ever but anyway that's what's on the back there i have not actually played this one yet so i'll be completely honest so my my experience with the game is very limited but you can see some of the stuff right there so eventually i will get the chance to play it but i I mean, I've got so fucking many games to play, so eventually whenever I sit down and go through it, uh, the only thing I was kind of bummed out with this was 
if you can notice, this one actually looks like it's got a little bit of sun damage on it. Not a whole hell of a lot to be noticeable, but uh, it, it was something I've been staring at. I'm like, huh. Huh, not as vibrant. Motherfucker. But not a big deal. And technically it was a freebie to me, so I don't really mind. Now, this right here, I went to get because of Gunsmoke and Mercs. And that was the main thing. So this is Capcom Generations 4. And open it up so you can see the inside. And again, got the little spine card there with that. But I really, really liked Mercs a whole lot whenever I played on Sega Genesis. Gunsmoke, I played on NES. So I'm like... Wait, I can get the arcade version of cities? Huzzah! Fuck yeah, I'll go and do that. So, anybody who's a big fan of any of the arcade Capcom games from, like, way back in the day, these are worth picking up, and then some. And just absolutely phenomenal. And they're, they're very inexpensive. You know, a lot of people think that importing for the Saturn, or really for any game system, is going to be really expensive. But if you look around, games like this, they don't cost a lot, and... You know, granted, you could go and get a MAME emulator and play them that way, but I, I, I'm a person, I like to have the physical uh, medium that it, it was actually originally intended for, so that's pretty damn cool. Now this, I have to go and give a shout out and a big thanks to Lou Pasillo because he sent me this. Uh, he's somebody that I've shot the shit with tons of times. He listens to the Hate Bit Podcast, watches my videos, is uh, friends with quite a few people I'm friends with, and is a very kick-ass dude and has very similar taste to me in games. Well, he had me up and he said, I, I have something pretty awesome and gnarly I'd like to go and send you. And he knows me quite well. Right there, we have Vampire Savior. So, and if you all know what Vampire Savior is, it's Darkstalkers! The Darkstalkers series is one of the few fighting franchises that I hold in very, very, very high regard. And again, while talking about ghouls and ghosts and ghosts and goblins and stuff, uh, I like horror-themed things, and this is a 2D fighter by Capcom that essentially encompasses all of that and then some. You have your Frankensteins and your mummies and shit, and you have vampires and stuff. And many of you will have seen characters uh, from the series show up in like Marvel vs. Capcom and stuff like that, and it's, it's very worth going and picking up and checking out. The versions on Sega Saturn always, for like 2D fighters always tend to be absolutely amazing because they use the RAM cards. Uh, the Sega Saturn just did 2D like a fucking monster and a beast! But seriously, it was very cool to be able to pick up something like this. Uh, my very first Sega Saturn game that I had was, and I need to go through and find it, uh, but, but it was, um, it, it, it was actually a Darkstalkers game and for the fucking love of me, I cannot find it while I, I'm looking up there. You have to go and love when shit like that happens. Like, I'm gonna go and reference something that's sitting right behind me, and I cannot fucking think of it, and now I seem like a complete and utter fucking buffoon. Oh, yeah, no wonder. Sephiroth is in front of it. Night Warriors, thank you. Because when you have a, a complete brain fart, then Sephiroth has to come in and cock block you and make you look like a damn fool. Well, thank you. <laughs> anyway. So I have this, if you are a fighting game fan, Sega Saturn and Sega Dreamcast, two of the best systems that you can get because they have 2D fighters galore on them and it's fantastic. So Lupicillo, again, thank you very much for this. You're very fucking epic for doing that, my friend. Down here, I had done an unboxing video of this a really long time ago and I, I was just like, dude, it's a tactical RPG in English, but it was a Japanese only game. So I don't have to say a whole hell of a lot about it. If you want to go check out, just see the unboxing video. But it is Shadow of the Tusk right there. And the reason why I picked this up is because it's in English. Do you realize how fucking rare that is? A Japanese-only game that's text-heavy that's English. Wow, that, it, like, it fucking blew my mind. It, it's just something I had seen. I'm like, that's really interesting. Uh, in, inside, if I can open this is an entire card set, uh, some of the monsters and stuff that are contained within it. But it it's something I just, I, I had to have. I, w I was just kind of astonished and shocked by it. But yeah, really kick-ass game for anybody that's a big RPG enthusiast, strategy games, uh, tactical games, you should take note of that. Uh, this right here is something I, I've had for quite a while, and this is Deep Fear. So, as a big-time survival horror fan, I've wanted this game for a long time. I've wanted the PAL version of it because it's in English, but it's expensive. I've never been able to get my hands on it. Every time I see it for auction, it's like $70 or more, and I'm like, that is fucking way too much for it. The Japanese variant of it, though, 
cost next to nothing, and I decided to pick it up because, like Resident Evil, this is all spoken in English, so you know the entire story. But all the dialogue, uh, all the actual text in it is in Japanese, so it makes it kind of difficult to traverse through the game. Um, and, and this is actually from Sega, and apparently Sega ended up making this because they got snubbed by Capcom for Resident Evil 2. So they didn't want to be outdone with the survival horror genre pretty much booming and taking off. So they made this game right here. I'm just bummed out that they never brought it to the States, but yeah, what, what the fuck can you do? So, Deep Fear, very awesome stuff. It, it actually reminds me of, um, uh, what would be the best way to describe it? There, there's a horror movie called Leviathan. Or Leviathan, depends on who you ask. But uh, Leviathan, where they're done at the very bottom of the ocean, they work down there, then this monster goes and takes over, starts fucking up everything, killing people and stuff. And that's kind of what this reminds me of, uh, to a certain degree. Crossover with the thing. So there you go, you have this. And I thought that was pretty awesome. And lastly, this is a game I just bought recently. I picked up and I was absolutely ecstatic to get it. But it is Gale Racer! And Gale Racer, whenever I was checking out tons of things online, I'd started researching this, saw it on GameSec, and uh, they have they, they have really good taste whenever it comes to racing games and stuff like that, and um, I'd seen this, I'm like, dude, this is actually pretty fucking awesome. But this, ironically, this came out in 1991, and this is actually the first appearance of Sonic the Hedgehog, ever. Ever, ever, ever. So this predates the original Sonic the Hedgehog game, and ironically, Sonic the Hedgehog is just dangling in the mirror. And, and I, I thought it was kind of interesting that that's the first time we ever got to see him, so I, I always thought that was kind of novel. But um, it, it's like first person cockpit perspective, I don't want, know why I'm saying cockpit because you're inside a fucking race car, but you get the idea. But it just really fast frantic, uh, lots of 2D sprite work and stuff like that. I, I love fast racing games and stuff like that, and it just looks really cool. Uh, as you can see right there, they show on their um, the car, like, very bumpy road. You'll hit fucking, like, mini jumps and shit like that. And I don't know, it just, it looked really neat. I liked it a lot. I think it's kind of weird, though, that they use all these CG uh, cutscenes on the back for it because they don't look nearly as nice as the in-game graphics, in my opinion. So, yeah, and it's also weird, like, right right there. It's like, it looks like the car's fucking blowing up. Like, I don't want to drive that. that. That sounds fucking terrible. So, yeah, Gale Racer, another racing game. I, I, I like Sega racing games, and I like racing games in general, so I'm like, fuck it, why not that? So, that is my import Sega Saturn collection. I do have a three-part Sega Saturn video collection, because there's so fucking many of them. So if you ever get bored and want to check that out, by all means, you can go and do that. But it's a collection video I haven't done in quite some time, and I like being nostalgic and talking about this stuff. And again, if you want to go about being able to import for the Saturn like me, just get yourself a little Game Shark. And there's other import devices that you can plug right into the back. But uh, yeah, if you have a store that specializes in imports, hit them up. Uh, look online through Google. You can go on Amazon and eBay, go on Craigslist, maybe trade with people online. Whatever the case is, importing for the Saturn is where it's at. It's the bee's knees, I say! So, anyway, I want to thank you a whole bunch for checking out this video. Listen to me rabble babble and uh, talk about some of these games. Uh, hopefully I got somebody interested in something new. Maybe, possibly, I have no fucking clue. But anyway, so, I will conclude this. Like always, nerds, nerdettes, and gamers, game the fuck on. And remember, SEGA! SEGA!